Welcome to all you intrepid people. I have got to assume that you've already laid in all of your candles and batteries and Monopoly games for this supposed blizzard that's going to hit us, and we're really glad you have this evening free. I'm Melissa Vale. I'm on the board of the Friends of John Jay Homestead, and on behalf of New York State Parks and the Friends, I welcome you to this 2016 Scholars Series telling stories of war. Um, please turn off your cell phones, and here are the exits. I'm required to tell you that. I have some thank yous. First of all, uh, to Susan McGill and Heidi Rieger for having brought us this wonderful uh, group tonight. To our scholars committee who are listed on the back of your programs for their generosity with underwriting and ideas both. Um, to the volunteers who help take care of this site to the members of the Friends of John Jay Homestead, please know that if you join, we will use your support well. And really, really important to the staffs of the New York State Department of Parks and the Friends of John Jay Homestead who do so much with such tight resources. So I really am gonna ask you to give them a hand because they're great. Thank you. We have some special guests here. We have some descendants in the room with the name of Shefflin, and I'm gonna ask you to just remember that name, and you'll hear it again in a couple of minutes. And one of our newer partners, um, Aquila Theater, who do Desiree Sanchez, who's the uh, artistic director, and they're a group from Katona and NYU who do performances of Greek drama with theories of themes of heroes and betrayal during wartime with companies comprising professional actors and veterans together. Um, some of you may have seen their performance of fe a female Philoctetes here last June, and we're going to have another uh, partnership with them this coming June, so watch for that. Um, upcoming events. This year's theme is called Telling Stories of War. And we started focusing on this idea with all the renewed attention that's being given to Jay's role in the adoption of the Constitution, which was motivated by the Federalist shame at the treatment of the members of the Continental Army during the War for Independence. Um, under the Articles of Confederation, states only paid taxes on a voluntary basis and there was no money to take care of the army and that was one of the motivators behind the adoption of the Constitution and Jay, of course, was a leader um, in that movement. That's, so the, the con tonight's connection to that theme is self-evident. Um, in February, we will explore how we talk about war through art with Kevin Murphy, who's a curator at the Williams College Museum of Art, talking about how you can see through artists, four of whom are represented in our collection, how the divergence of American art from British art shows the development of revolutionary feeling in the 18th century. Then in March, we'll think about war and constitutions with Nicholas Robinson, one of the founders of the field of environmental law, talk about the birth in feudal England of the idea of a rule of law in nature, since control over nature was how kings in that age paid for their wars. So please come to those talks too and uh, also look at our beautiful new website to see all the other things that we have going on at this amazing and dynamic site. Now, some of you know that I always try to show you a J connection with uh, these evenings. And since Songwriting with Soldiers calls itself the Civil War Diaries of our time, I'm going to share a J Civil War story with you. There is Colonel William Jay. He's on the right, and he's the great-grandson of John Jay, the founder. He was a, he fought in five battles of the Civil War on the Union side, and under the Rose Arbor 
in the garden, come back in the spring, is a stone that used to be the headstone for his horse, Old Fred, which carried him through five battles of the Civil War. Old Fred is buried somewhere up on the hillside, but the stone they cared enough about to bring down here. Um, I'm going to read you a letter that William J. wrote to his sister, and here we go. The heading says, Headquarters, 5th Corps, Army of the Potomac, Camp near Warrenton, Georgia, July 28th, 1863. He wrote this when he was 22 years old. He's a little older there. My darling sister, how kind it was to you how kind it was to write to me so soon after having taken the most important step in your little life. To say that I congratulate you with all my heart sounds so flat that I have sat with my pen in my teeth 15 minutes after writing the heading of this note. Your welfare is indeed very dear to me, more so than you can be aware of, judging from my careless, hasty letters. I have never realized till now how time has been passing since I left home and can only wonder that your affection for me has remained so strong. I regret more than I can tell you that I have not been able to see more of Willie Shefflin of late years, but I know him to be a gentleman, more than, more than which cannot be said of any man. I rejoice, too, perhaps a little selfishly, that you're going to marry a soldier, and I am sure that this had something to do with your decision. I shall apply for a leave of absence to be present at your wedding, but if I do not get home for it, or if I never get home again, my prayers for your happiness and for that of your betrothed husband will be nonetheless earnest and sincere. Ever, my dearest Mary, your devoted brother, William J. He did return for the wedding, and in our back parlor gallery, we have an exhibit of family photographs, one of which is a photograph of the family gathered at that wedding by Matthew Brady. So we invite you to come back during open hours and see that exhibit and see that photograph. So finally, tonight, Songwriting with Soldiers began in 2012 after Darden Smith, a singer-songwriter from Austin, Texas, performed at a military hospital in Germany. Mary Judd, with a background in education, communications, and programming, joined as his executive director. They pair established songwriters with active duty and veteran service members and, in their words, give voice to somebody who might not otherwise be able to describe their experiences. It would be presumptuous of me and unnecessary to describe the power and impact of their work, so I'll let them do it instead. Please welcome Songwriting with Soldiers. I have a Jay connection as well. Um, I was on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. It's, it's not much, but yeah, you do what you do. Uh, I had to say that. Sorry, I was. I, have a, I don't have a Jay Z connection. That would be even better. But anyway. So, um, first off, thank you very much for having us. Songwriting with soldiers. Um, this basic behind, the basic concept is that we start conversations between professional songwriters and um, and soldiers, wounded soldiers, with vets, and from that conversation, stories emerge. Um, stories of. All kinds of stories, positive stories, negative stories, but human stories. I started uh, th this program out of a realization that I was um, self-segregating because I was a, a groovy hipster musician 
and I didn't think I had anything in common with soldiers. And when I met a soldier and actually talked to him, I realized that we had so much in common. And it was my uh, separation that was causing the, uh, the uh, feeling of separation. That was a very, very poorly worded sentence. <clears throat> but song, sitting down with someone and writing songs based on their story has changed my life. Originally, um, I just grew up thinking that it was us and them, it's people that served in the military and then the rest of the people. And the whole point to me of songwriting with soldiers is to move past us and them to us. It's just us. So these are stories of, of the human condition, the stories of, of our modern times. Like this one, this song is called Illustrated Man. At one of our retreats, another songwriter and I, we were working with a man named Dustin Kreitz. Dustin was covered in tattoos and talking to Dustin I was like hey Dustin you got a lot of tattoos man uh, like uh, what are those is there a story behind those tattoos and he began to tell us his, the story but every tattoo that he had was there's he designed it there's a story it meant something to him I tell you this story it's written on my skin And you might get the picture Of the shape that I'm in Yeah, now this one's for my buddies The gone as gone can be And every time I reach out They're right in front of me This one's for my lover She's on the inside of my arm Yeah, she my little geisha She keep me safe and warm And you might think I'm crazy Like I don't have a plan I'm a decorated soldier Illustrated man I got four letters on my left hand And four more on my right I hit them with love And I hit them with hope When somebody wants to fight Oh, and I got a few dark secrets That just won't let me be I keep them in a place very few can see Brother, if I trust you I might let you take a look This ink is just a bookmark I'm an open book And you might think I'm crazy Try to understand I'm a decorated soldier, illustrated man. You might think I'm crazy, just try to understand. I'm a decorated soldier, illustrated man. Now, um, in that song, those words are not my words. The soldier, Dustin, he actually said, yeah, I guess I'm an illustrated man. And, and the, song, the other songwriter, my friend Gary Nicholson, were there. We just went, illustrated man. How do you not write that song? That's like perfect. <laughs> Dustin actually said, he goes, yeah, I guess you might say I'm a, you might say I'm a decorated soldier. It's, just like, it's, it's not that hard. When people talk about trauma, and when the trauma is a fact of their life, they use really simple words. They use basic words. It's not complicated. It's not what I would call a $3 word. They 
is really simple. That's what songs are based on. Use basic words. And listen to the real stories and come together and write these beautiful songs that tell these stories. Um, so that's what we do as songwriters. And now I'd like to bring up my friend Mary Judd, who's the executive director of Songwriting with Soldiers, and she will tell you the rest of the story. Mary Judd. Am I on? Thank you, Darden. It's always such a pleasure to hear you sing these songs and share them. Hello, everyone. As Darden said, my name is Mary Judd, and I've got a mic on right here. <laughs> so I hope you can hear me. If you need me to be louder, just go like that. I'm the executive director, as Darden said, of Songwriting with Soldiers, and we have known each other since eighth grade. Uh, I tell you that to let you know that we did not intend to start Songwriting with Soldiers. We had been reconnected after about 20 years of not seeing each other. A mutual friend said, ah, you know my friend Mary. We got on the phone and Darden said, I'm about to go write with some veterans. And it was after he had written in Germany and, and had this realization of, of what was possible in collaborating in this way. And I said, can I go watch? Can I write about it? This is going to be so cool. No military background, either of us very much coming from a place of art and curiosity. And when I saw him sit down and talk to the, the soldier and, and just exchanging stories, I felt like I was shedding layers of stereotypes. And, and I know Darden felt the same way. We kept kind of looking at each other like, wow, wow. And then we could tell that the soldier was kind of going, wow, these guys are really listening. And, and we just, we were really connecting. And what happened after, when Darden said, I can get more songwriters, and I said, oh, I can curate a weekend. Let's do a, let's do a retreat. And that was, we're, we're going into our fourth year now. We've held 20-something retreats in a, several states around the country. We can't not do this. Um, it's, it's powerful, and as you heard the song, and we, we will tell you some more stories tonight, but the, the point of what happened is two civilians going with their gut about creativity and about curiosity and about an interest in our, our fellow man, uh, learning so much from these soldiers that all of us, we felt like everybody needs to be hearing this. The reason we say the Civil War Diaries of our time is because these are, these are every soldier coming to us. They're not aspiring songwriters. Some of them are very interested in it, but 95% of them that come, as you'll hear from one of them tonight, came with their arm twisted. <laughs> they weren't necessarily knowing what they were in for. And let me, let me show you some pictures because pictures are worth a thousand words, right? Several stories. So in a nutshell, what we do, what we have found happens at our retreats is we're building community and hope through collaborative songwriting. That's our spark. We hold retreats in beautiful settings. This is Rensselaerville in upstate New York. We're about to hold our first downstate retreat in May, which we're very excited about. In, but in Briarcliff Manor, not far from here, and we'll be filling you all in on information about that and getting referrals for veterans to come. We hold them in gorgeous settings. We bring in top-notch Olympic songwriters, Olympic athletes of the songwriting world. Um, Marshall Crenshaw, Mary Gaucher, Gary Nicholson, Darden Smith, and the list goes on and on and on. We have phenomenal songwriters. They have to be able to work so fast to listen. This is Dustin Kreitz, who, this is when they were writing Illustrated Man. Dustin is in the middle. You can see a little bit of his tattoo there on his arm. These are some soldiers in Long Beach, California. Um, they were so excited. We, we could tell you stories all night. I'll just tell you that. We could tell you stories forever. Um, we've, we've been to Walter Reed a few times. Darden's been there a few times by himself, meets one-on-one -on -one or with small groups. This was a group of soldiers. They had no idea what they were in for when they walked in the room. And they left a couple hours later with one or two songs. This was an all-female veterans retreat that we held near Fort Hood. Um, as you can imagine, really powerful. N those women's, we would never know those stories. 
I'll tell you where all the songs are and you can hear them and read the lyrics if you're interested. We have held retreats for military families. This song right here is called The Battle Rages On. It's written by the teenagers from three or four different families about what it's like when mom or dad comes home from combat. Important, incredible song, gorgeous song. And they're singing here. So another thing that happens at our retreats is the veterans end up wanting to stay connected. Many of them come back as peer support volunteers. Rob will tell you his story, he's one. And uh, this man right here leading this workshop is James Monk. He's a veteran who was a videographer, a combat videographer, and came to help us uh, video our retreats. The videos that some of you maybe have seen were filmed by James. By his eighth retreat, we got him to sit down and write a song. And you're going to hear that song later tonight. These are other veterans, some of whom had come to a retreat before. Some of them were at this retreat, listening to James talk about how to tell your story through video. So we got James to the point where, I mean, I don't want to take credit, but we encouraged him, said, you've got so much to offer. You can share how you tell a story through video. And so now James is very happily leading our videography workshops. And we're excited to introduce him to the Jacob Burns Film Center people when he comes in May. We also offer relaxation and alternatives when they're not writing songs. Obviously, this is a yoga class, and it is taught by our very own Rob Spohr <laughs> to other veterans. Um, it's, we feel it's important. You spark so much through the songwriting that it's really nice for them to have other things to do when they're not writing. Um, we're big on closure and building community. I've done a lot of work in happiness research and positive psychology, and it's very important for people to know that they're part of something bigger than themselves and that they are engaged and they're um, able to make a difference with each, with each other. We hold a, a, a session with the songwriters included, the veterans, where, the, where they will talk about their song that they wrote. They'll talk about what strengths they might have had to bring with them to get to the point to write the song, What's, what strengths are in the song that they wrote. And these have been really inspiring for a lot of people. We just put it all out there. Whatever works, we'll do it if it can help them feel better and more confident. We end each retreat with a performance. By the end of the weekend, we, we begin on Friday around 4 or 5. We wrap up on Sunday at about 4. 12, 14, 16 songs are written in that time period. So this is one of the most amazing concerts of all time. <laughs> when you're at the end of a retreat and you're hearing 14 new songs that are written by and with the soldiers, with the veterans, and performed by these many or Grammy winning, just phenomenal songwriters. Uh, it's really powerful. And for the veterans to, to hear their story put into a song and performed is huge. But then when they look around at their peers and they see them nodding, or they see civilians, guests who come, and they're crying or they're nodding and they're relating to it too, it just doesn't get any better than that. That's when the stories are just, the more specific, the more honest, then they're so universal. And we end with a circle, something that many, many people think would be really corny, and a lot of them are like, oh my God, we gotta go do a group circle and hug. <laughs> we, can, we, we love it. This is such a highlight of, because this is get everybody getting together and you go around one at a time and give a highlight of the weekend. So that's how we end it. The connections go on and on and on. So rather than me tell you any more about it, I'd like to introduce one of our veterans who has been at our retreat. He's written a song and he'll tell you a little bit about his experiences. Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Spohr, Active Duty National Guard. Uh, good evening. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight and thank you for your service if you're a military person. Um, here's Mary's right. I've had to have my arm twisted to come to an event. I deployed to Iraq in 2004 as an infantryman. Um, saw a lot of bad things and negative things. Um, I got certified to teach yoga and through my wife, and uh, she taught, teaches yoga at the retreats. So she was like, all right, 
you can go to the retreat and teach with me and, and help me teach. And before I knew it, I was a participant. And the things that have come out of the retreat through telling my story with a songwriter have been nothing but positivity. So what I feel from participating in a songwriting with soldiers retreat is I took the negative things that, from war and really turned it into something positive that I wanted to share with my fellow veterans and help them out and show them that people care and bring the humanity back to the soldier. So we're not just a uniform that's doing what we're told to do. Sometimes we don't agree with the politics behind things, but we signed up to serve the country and the people in it and protect their freedoms. And I feel that this organization really understands that and helps us take a lot of the weight off our shoulders and the combat stresses that we've experienced just through service. So it was a very moving and powerful experience for me so that I wanted to help all my other friends and get them to go to a retreat and see how just songwriting, because I'm not a songwriter, I never even thought I would be doing that. Um, but there's other creative outlets there as well, like drawing and videography, photography, clinics, and it's just a, a, a great experience, and that's my thing. What are you doing right now? Uh, right now, I work full-time for the New York Army National Guard as a personnel sergeant, and I also teach veterans yoga on Friday nights at a studio in Del Mar. <laughs> so it kind of rubbed off a little bit. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Singing one more song. Um, the guy who wrote the, the, I mean, the guy who was teaching the videography class, his name's James. And, um, you know, James has been hanging around us for a while, and I finally kind of forced him into writing a song. He did not want to do it, because a lot of times uh, soldiers don't want to tell their story, you know. And uh, so I'm sorry, I'm going to slip over here. I'm going to talk to you while I walk over here to the side of the stage. Act like this is a part of the show. And uh, so, uh, <laughs> James, he didn't, want to, he didn't really want to tell the story. And a lot of the times, they don't want to go there. And they don't want to go there with somebody who, um, I mean, they'll sit around and talk to other vets, type of stories. But they sometimes don't think that if you're a civilian, A, you really do hurt. B, you're really going to listen. Or you're going to get freaked out by what they tell you and sort of lose it. And uh, so James is a little hesitant. And he also, like many vets, they always feel that someone else needs it worse than they do. So they wanted to make sure that other people were served first. I had to twist his arm. James, uh, and I sat down. I said, so James, and I start every, almost every writing session the same way. I go, so tell me, uh, why did you join the military? Because something that was an, a kind of awakening moment for me when I first started into this work was uh, it's actually a volunteer military that's going to sink your teeth into that one you know because I, I was like why would you ever do that <laughs> but that's how I, I was raised from a different kind of family you know it just wasn't something that was done so I'm always curious about what is what actually was your motivation because it's a you know it's a million different stories. So we started that conversation and it got around to how he became a videographer in the military in the army. Conversation kept going until it finally wound up with his first combat experience. So his job was to film everything. So imagine filming in combat, and your job is to get really still pictures. Think about that for a second. So he started telling me about his, uh, his experience. And James is a deacon in the Baptist church in, in uh, Charleston. He's a man of great faith. So 
So, so, so what was what was your? I mean, first battle was Fallujah, the first battle of Fallujah. And I said, so what was that like, man? He goes, he goes, man, I was just blind scared. Now, as a songwriter, I hear blind scared, and I go like, that's awesome. <sighs> Write that down. He goes, yeah, man, I was just praying really hard, like Old Testament kind of praying, you know. I said, so, I mean, how'd you get through? And he goes, you know, I think I was just holding God's hand. Blind, scared. Over there. Under attack. First combat. Praying real hard like Daniel prayed Back in those Old Testament days The bullets started flying, it was crazy and loud Doing all I could not to get knocked down Holding God's hand Holding God's hand Holding God's hand Guide me through There was this kid from Texas Jose Valles Just 19 A terrible thing it Seemed like he was just getting started in life and he had a dream and he had a wife and he lost it all in that place he's sitting right here i can see his face holding god's hand holding god's hand holding god's hand Guide me through Holding God's hand Holding God's hand Holding God's hand Guide me through Guide me through Well, I'm back home now and I've been figuring out Why I made it through That's why I'm telling you Everybody lost and everybody's scared And everybody's wondering if anybody cares And the reason that I made it through the fight Was to love my neighbor do what's right and just love my neighbor holding God's hand holding God's hand holding God's hand got me through holding Holding God's hand Holding God's hand Got me through Got me through Got me through Got me through Thank you. So one of the, um, I mean, Mary can, I can't even sing that song sometimes. It's like, you know, it's so powerful. because It's like, it's not my words, it's his words. He's coming through me. That's the beautiful thing about art and about stories and stuff. And, and the commonality of the stories is that um, the, most, the most powerful things is, hey, uh, this project has, has 
pretty much destroyed every stereotype I've had about not only uh, people in the ser- military service, but about like people in general. It's just like you never know until you ask. Sitting next to somebody on the train, you think you know their story. You don't know anything. You know, you got to ask them. You got to talk to them, figure it out. And uh, <clears throat> also, that the uh, one of the greatest things that we've found is that when we sing the song, um, what what people respond to in art is when they see themselves in a piece of work. You know, you see a painting, you go, "Oh my!" I, you make a story up that resonates with you. These songs, like so James's story, that's James's story. But other people hear that story, they see themselves in that story. So we th- often think that we're alone and that no one else has our experience and no one else can identify. And the soldiers feel that way. And they hear, they hear other songs and they see themselves in these other songs. And the most powerful thing is that when they s- see other people seeing themselves in their songs, big so we're not alone actually not alone we're actually not uh the only person who's had that experience so that's to me the most powerful part so what happens now <laughs> q a yeah yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna all put right. those uh <clears throat> pictures on again did you all see the portraits that we were scrolling through those are I don't know, 20 or 25 out of probably 250 that we've had so far. Um, as Darden said, you know, when he sings that song, that's James's story. And it's, it's such a privilege to be here tonight in such a historic place, but also to be able to put their portraits up here. And, and they each represent 10 others. And it's, it's nice to be able to put their pictures up. So I think I'll go back and put them up again. And I don't know how we're doing on time. If you want to do any Q&A or... We have time for Q&A, and then I'll also say that you guys have some CDs over there for sale and conversation. CD and books, yeah. Whenever, and books. Exactly. Yeah, let me tell you. We've got plenty of time. We have time for people to have a glass okay. of wine and stand around and talk about right. all this great stuff, too, but let's start okay. with Q&A. I'll, I'll tell you quickly what we do have on that table over there is <coughs> one is a sampler CD that's from a few of the early retreats. Another is a CD that's from our most recent retreat here in New York, and uh, we have a few of those. After each retreat, we make a bundle for each participant that's one of those photo books with the lyrics. Our photographers are often uh, military photographers, really good, award-winning military combat photographer of the year we've had, Um, LA Times photographers who've been embedded. top level people, it's a, it's a privilege. So that, that book over there with the photographs is uh, Jody Martinez, who's currently in Syracuse uh, Photography School. She's active duty Air Force National Guard. So we have a few, they're really rare collector's items. One's already been purchased. <laughs> and the other CDs that we have for sale, anything, any donations that we get here are going directly to help support our retreat in May. These retreats, as you can imagine, are, not, are expensive. They, we, we ask nothing from the veterans except for them to come and enjoy the weekend. It's a real gift. So any um, information that you'd like about us, we have over on the table. We've got brochures, our website, feel free. I'll put the pictures back up again and you can hear the songs of all of these veterans. Nearly everyone is on our website. Sometimes people opt to not have it out there. And um, very rarely, believe it or not, which is really wonderful for all of us. So I'll open that up. I'll key up the photos and open the floor. Yes, ma'am. Me? Me? Yes. Okay. Well, I guess I'm probably the oldest person here, so I'm about four wars back. I had two brothers in the service in World War II. A brother in the Navy, four years in the Pacific. A brother in the Army, four years, uh, Battle of the Bulge and all that. And they came home, and they did not talk about it at all. They didn't share, and it was the pattern back then, I think, unlike now, when it seems like the soldiers have a wonderful outlook that they can talk about 
their awful experiences. And I appreciate how marvelous it is to put this into song. And thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to repeat that so that it can go into the feed that will become your video and our podcast. And that was our wonderful guest, Francie Train, who was talking about her brothers who returned from the war um, with a much more stoic attitude about talking about their experiences. And she was just saying that this is a change of attitude about talking about what you've been through. And uh, I wish that... So the next... Uh, question, please hold on until we can give you a microphone so that we don't lose the questions the way we lost that wonderful one. Questions? Yes, sir. Well, I was, I was going to ask if any of these songs have been recorded, but I gather there are CDs over there that have it on it. Yes. What kind of marketing have you, I'm getting, the two songs you sang I thought were spectacular. Fantastic. And I think a lot of people would like them. Yeah. So what kind of marketing are you doing with these CDs to get sort of to get the word out? Right. Uh, well, um, we just got through recording uh, a record, a 13-song real album, you know, with produc production you know, in Nashville with these friends of ours. And uh, um, all the songs are recorded at the uh, retreats. And we bring a demo, I uh, bring a, a mobile recording studio, and they're all up on our website. Um, I've been in the music business for 30 years. I hate the music business. It's awful. And uh, so one of the great things for me was let's go make some music without worrying about the music business. Let's, the reason for this is not like marketing and all that stuff. It's, uh, I'm not uh, negating that. The point of songwriting with soldiers is not for people to buy the records. The point of songwriting with soldiers is to sit down at that moment and for me to listen, or our, our writers, to actually listen to the story. So the, for my goal is for the soldier to see me seeing them. Okay? That's the point. Everything after that, which is, and it's been really lovely to do this project and actually spend three years not worrying about the, the music business part of it. Now we've got this body of work put together and we put together, we, we went in and recorded. We have over 200 songs that we've written in the last three years. So now that we have this and we have our legs under us as a program, what Mary does, what I do, we combine. Now we're ready to go out and market it. We wanted to make sure that we had that first because quite often nonprofits, they get kind of backwards. They start selling before they're really figured out exactly what they're doing. We didn't want to do it. We want to be around for a long time. So now, and it's kind of a separate business and so we're beginning with records and record deal put it out tour all that stuff that'll happen so we're just beginning because we're we're really a young a young small knit group i mean mary is crystal like that 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 is our organization <laughs> it's like so we we just we're there and we just we just want to move slowly being mary can she can speak to that and that said, you can hear all the songs that have yeah. been written. They're all on our website. If you go to songwritingwithsoldiers.org slash music, or you just go to the homepage and you'll see the music, you can click on that. And every retreat, you click on the retreat name and you'll see the, the CD. And all the songs are there. You click on it again. This is like the computer world. You click on it, the lyrics are there. You can hear the song. You can hear all the songs on the website. You can download it to keep it for a donation. So they're all available for everyone to hear and our, our veterans and Rob can speak to this too. After a retreat or after the songwriting session immediately, these guys often are taping, recording the song when they write it. They'll sing mm -hmm. it the very first time, they'll email it, they'll email the song file to the veterans so they immediately have their song. They can go home or they can send it out to others. We've had veterans go make their own little video and put it on YouTube right away. So that's, that's when we say the Civil War Diaries of our time, delivered in today's medium. It's download music. And these guys are able to get this experience put into song and then send it out to their friends, to their family, to their buddies who are deployed. 
We've had a song. We wrote a song. We recorded and just recorded on our phone. Emailed it to a soldier. He bounced it to his friends in Iraq, and it was back in five minutes. So the actual he wrote the song about his buddies. It's like pow. It's like that's the beauty of technology. So. If, if we you have any 20, ideas about marketing, we would yeah. like to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, and if we were 20 years ago, probably, there'd be albums and it'd be a big deal. It's the, everyone knows though that world is so in flux right now. And as Darden said, and as we remind our, our veterans, this is about that moment. This is about the connection in the song. It's the, the ripple effect afterwards is, is gigantic and a huge bonus. Yes. Do you, are you familiar with the Institute for Veterans and Military Families up in Syracuse? IAVA? I, yeah. I, v, I, yeah. Institute for Veterans oh, and Military Families, yeah. yes. That's a uh -huh. different one, yeah. They would love yeah, to hear. Yeah, we definitely need to get are you really aligned connected with them. With them. I can, Barely, yeah, we've just, we've just heard about them. I think GE does a program with veterans through them, and so we need, we're ready for that connection. That's a one, yeah, that's a wonderful one. They, they, this is very valuable. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I love sitting up here calling on people. Yeah. <laughs> John's a teacher. There you go. How do you find and select the veterans? That's a great question, especially as we're entering into a retreat in this area. So there's a woman that we met tonight who is part of a veterans group in this area. Definitely we'll be contacting her, sending her our flyer. We'll contact another gentleman here who works with veterans. Um, in another facility nearby. Uh, we come into an area, we find the veteran, the VA center, the VA hospital. Um, there's usually a pretty quick network of often therapists who work with veterans who would say, ah, this is something you'd like. The best thing though that's happening now is our veterans are telling other veterans. And mm -hmm. so it, that's about half of our participants now are referred by another veteran who went through, I don't want to say went through the program, but who attended one of our retreats. And by the way, soldiers doesn't mean only Army. We work with all the different branches. I noticed one, you know, a Marine was here. We work with all of them. So. All branches, and it, originally we were funded by Bob Woodruff Foundation, so their specific niche is post 9-11 veterans. So our first retreat was that. Um, then we ended up in the, um, Albany Vet Center, specifically from a veteran who had been to our retreat who said, I'd like to bring this into the vet center. He's a therapist and he had a mix. So he had Vietnam, Korean War, post 9-11. And we thought, wow, this will be interesting to see how it works. It was amazing. It's amazing. So we, all conflicts, all branches. Yes. Uh, why Civil War Diaries? Was there something in any way equivalent way back when? Well, gosh, who knows? Um, that just kind of popped in our heads. I mean, this is because of the vast, um, it's not a targeted audience. It's just, if you think of the Civil War Diaries, it's what we've been able to, you know, what's been left, what you've been able to find, and, and we all get exposed to those different stories that we wouldn't otherwise know. And that's kind of what we feel is happening here. Uh, specifically, veterans like Rob or some of the women who came to the female retreat were there because they were told by someone else to come. They shared an experience that, that might have stayed locked in this emotional pocket over here forever. Um, it's just kind of this broad network casting. We, we make it really clear to everyone, we are not affiliated with the military. We're not a, a political organization. We're not a, a religious organization. Uh, we are Darden and Mary, you know? <laughs> and some really great people that we keep, that keep coming together. And so it's not really Civil War Diaries, but in the context of just being a broad swath of stories that we might not otherwise know. Rob spoke to that a little earlier today, though. <laughs> I've got the mic over here. I'll pass it on in a second. Uh, Mary, um, do you spe specify uh, when you're looking for vets that they have been engaged in combat? Nope. No. There's many ways to go to, to combat. We've had one of the women, she signed, she, I read if she entered into the, the military, she found out she had cancer. So she spent five years in cancer treatment before she was retired. This, they don't make a bigger combat than that. So it's the same. This same woman, thing. another one, yeah. um, she's a great example of one of our soldiers who was not in combat, but she was, whatever you would call it, in, she's over there where there's a lot of combat all around her, but she's not officially in combat. She's also from Kenya. 
She's a Muslim. She's a mother of six, and she just retired yep. after 20 years in and the her army just and works in West Point. Her son's new. Talk about breaking our stereotypes. That's question, yeah. <laughs> um, do you get people who are interested in actually learning how to be a songwriter who are veterans, and do you offer training or guidance in that yeah, respect? I can talk about that. Uh, we get some, and we... we uh, it's impossible to teach someone to write songs. I mean, I, th I think period. You, like, t you can show them a few tips, but really writing songs takes, I mean, I, I started when I was 10. You know, I mean, it was 13 years ago, but anyway. Um, <laughs> no. So I feel that the, our work, uh, what interests me really is going really deep within this person's story. And teaching the mechanics of songwriting in that process is a distraction from going deep because you get hung up on the, the process of the song. Now, we encourage them, if they do write songs, or if they're musical, to pursue that because you have a story, telling your story, and you, you, they experience the amazing uh, catharsis of telling your story honestly in the way you do it. But I'm, I'm personally a terrible teacher. I, I, I'm just not the guy. And uh, most of the people that we work with, they're just really good songwriters, but if you ask them how to write a song, they probably couldn't tell you because it's such a weird kind of science. There are, um, and there are also so many organizations that do that, that really work with uh, how to play music, how to write songs. And so Mary and I just kind of went, okay, let's stick with what we're good at <laughs> and what also interests us. Because then we'll probably do it better, as opposed to trying to be everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm really, I, I'm just not really interested in staying on the surface. I just want to, I want to go all the way down. And we only have three days. And I want to go all the way down and back up in three days. And so to get hung up on, get too hung up on how songs work and what you should do, it's a, it's a kind of a distraction. And it doesn't minimize teaching at all. It's that let's, we should leave that to the people who are very, very good at it, who are interested in that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because there is a point, there's a real value to that. When they're not writing songs, because they don't write all weekend, there's a lot of other downtime. And so they're either getting a massage or going to yoga, or we have other creative compositions through blank. And it's because they're, they're often really inspired after the songwriting yeah. session. So there's really great videography workshops, creative writing, beautiful journaling. Um, we have a woman, a veteran's wife, who we got to come back to do Zentangle, which is this really cool doodling, um, and she's certified in it. So there's a lot of other outlets. And some of the, the participants who are into songwriting a little bit will come back. You know, and they'll bring their guitar, and so they're off talking with the other vets about songs. But in these sessions, it's songwriting with. I mean, they're, the songwriters are writing with the pros. And, and usually, like, if they write songs, like, I, I usually say, awesome, that's really great. For this time, how about you not write the song? Just talk. And, and, and that, it's a different, just a different window in. It's not better or worse, it just, it's just a different mm -hmm. window in. Yeah, so... Yeah, I just thought I'd comment about the Civil War connection. I happen to be reading a book about Gettysburg right now, and the author, whose name eludes me, quotes from many ordinary soldiers' diaries and letters. And I was listening to that song, In God's Hand. That song could have been written in 1865. <laughs> the, the soldiers' experience, yeah. the, uh, just the common thread, goes through the centuries. Mm. You're, you're right. Yeah, we should have a, do you ever have seances here? Maybe we channel some Civil War soldiers and, and you write with them. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll let you all do that. <laughs> <I'm not> Creative. <laughs> Anybody else? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Get your microphone. What happens after the workshops? Is there sort of a continuing Absolutely. dialogue with the yeah. Yeah. soldiers? That's a great question, and that was really important to us to not just be like a, oh, hey, come for the weekend, and you've got a song, see you later. That it, I mean, these are very real people. Um, the connections are really strong, and as, a, as I, being a former teacher and studying the happiness research, it's, this is just a prime opportunity to help people. A population that we all know is suffering a lot from feeling isolated and 
for really good reason, a great opportunity to build community. So along with the books and the CDs, you know, that help them keep the memory alive and literally share it through pictures and songs with other people, we have, um, we, we encourage them to come back to every retreat, any retreat that they're available for, come back as peer support. They keep, they get to hear the songs. They get possibly sit in and write another one with a group. Um, they also, we have a really active, um, Facebook group. We have a forum that's private just for them where they can share things. Uh, we have a group call after every retreat. We schedule it for about a couple months out so that they can have received their packet, connect again, give updates. And quarterly, we have a call that's called Creativity Calling, where I, I want to be the Terry Gross of this world someday and interview, we interview Darden about his creative history. Uh, Mary Gaucher, one of our, um, Mary Gaucher, who, if you're familiar with her, used to be a chef. She had three restaurants. So we talked about her creative path. So there's a lot of different ways they stay connected, and many of them stay connected with each other, which is really our goal. It, it's, uh, what we're about is, is creating a community, bringing together civilian and military people um, in a, on a human level, and how it maintains. I, I, Rob was just a part of this amazing thing that happened uh, with Josh. You want to tell the story? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is this on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Josh Gertz uh, attended the past retreat in Rensselaerville in October and wrote a song with Mary Gaucher, whom I wrote a song with last November. Um, so Mary got invited to play at the Grand Old Opry. And Josh plays harmonica, so she asked him if he would go. And this was on December 27th? Yeah. November. Or yeah. November 27th, sorry. Um, so he called me because his wife was nine months pregnant and she was scheduled for a C-section on that. Nine months and 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> Can we also <laughs> say that Josh is, is, is severely wounded, um, nerve damage. And he's in a, in a wheelchair, so it's, 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 and he lives in Buffalo? Yeah, up in Buffalo, New York. So he's wheelchair-bound. He uh, has a lot of trouble getting around. So his wife wasn't able to accompany him, so he sent me a text and was like, hey, what's going on? Mary Gaucher reached out to me and wants me to go to Nashville with her. I was like, oh, that's cool. And uh, so we kept texting back and forth, and I said to Krista, I was like, I I think he's asking me to go with him. <laughs> so, so I said, hey, uh, I go, what's the deal? And he's like, uh, well, Lisa can't go with me and I need somebody that I trust and that can take care of me and, and give me assistance. So he's like, you're the first person I thought of. And I'm like, all right. So we, uh, I got the time off from work and then I was planning on driving down to Nashville. I was gonna drive from Albany to Buffalo, pick him up, get in his wheelchair vehicle and then drive down to Nashville <laughs> on Friday for the performance on Saturday and then drive back Sunday. <laughs> so Service. That's what they I, do. <laughs> service. So I get a call from Mary Gaucher and she's like, Darden has this great connection with Veterans Airlift Command. And that's another nonprofit that provides pilots and airplanes for veterans that are in need. So we, you reached out to them, sent the information, and we got a call back on Friday morning, and they said, we got a pilot and a plane, just get out here to Buffalo. Private plane, got there and flew Josh and I down to Nashville, and we made the show, which is the 90th anniversary of the Grand Ole Opry, and he got, he was out there playing harmonica with the band and Mary, and it was, it was just an amazing experience. A couple, a couple of other details is yeah. that, first of all, they found one pilot who would fly them there on Saturday, and Josh um, was uncomfortable with arriving on Saturday. They found a second plane to fly him on Friday. The pilot hung out for the whole, this is like someone else paid for this plane to fly him. 
Okay, first off, these guys were going to drive from Buffalo <laughs> to Nashville. Like, are you crazy? No, I heard about that. Right. I was like, let's put him on a plane. He wouldn't get on a plane. He's like, oh, my God, well, let's get him on a plane. So they fly down. The pilot hangs out. They perform. They got a two-minute standing ovation at the Grand Ole Opry. So Whisper and Bill Anderson, I don't know if you remember Bill Anderson, the songwriter, country songwriter, Hall of Fame. He comes over and he goes, I've never seen that happen. Ever. He goes, I've been here with Dolly, George, I've seen it all. <laughs> Never a two minute. They turned the house lights on. Now, this is, not, this is the power of song, but it's also the power of community. Because here's like a bunch of people got together, two planes. Give me a break. Um, so, you know, to this, like, so we meet. It's, it's, it's this big thing that happened. It's a sea of, of people out there in this auditorium. So, so back to, you know, you talk about marketing. It's like <laughs> the music itself will find the audience. I mean, of course, you don't want to like, walk away from marketing. It finds this inc it's incredibly powerful stuff. It's not us, the songwriters. It's not just the soldiers. It's the coming together. <laughs> That's what makes it powerful and seeking a truth. And that truth, when you put it in the songs, is really effective. And it's a, a infectious, infectious. So everybody, everybody that was there that night said it was the most, it was like the place was vibrating. It was incredible. <clears throat> the baby was born the next day. Next day. He came on Monday and was very healthy and doing very well. Yeah. I don't think we would have let him go if we'd have known she was that due. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, what? The one, the one, excuse me, just one more thing. The one thing I've learned from working with is like, I thought, sir, before I started working with soldiers, and I, I know it might sound weird, or vets, in active military, however you want to say it, I, I did not understand what service was. I thought service was something you got. I didn't understand service was something you give. And that's what. Yeah. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. I think that's it. So thank you so much. Everyone should see that we have the website address for Songwriting with Soldiers in the program. So follow them and download their songs and, and keep on listening for when they, when the tours are announced and when their retreats are announced. So thank you so, so much for coming. Everyone, please stick around for a little while and talk about this wonderful experience we've just had and come back for the rest of our season. Thank you. Thank you.